Mr. Beast might just have made his greatest ever video. His 100 million subscriber special is closing in on 40 million views in just two days. But here's the really interesting thing. This video manages to combine all of Mr. Beast's best YouTube tactics into 15 minutes. If there's ever a video we need to closely study, it's this one. You see, it all revolves around the three-part Mr. Beast equation. An equation that led to the greatest YouTube growth story of all time. And it starts with part one, aiming for perfect retention. We all know that Mr. Beast is a master at keeping people watching from beginning to end. He constantly talks about his obsession with video retention. If I'm talking to this camera and you're not cutting it for too long, that's boring, you'll lose retention. But if I talk and you cut to that angle while I'm talking, yeah. I cut back, and you know, it, it helps it. But people often make the mistake of thinking that this is just about having lots of cuts and talking really fast. There's a lot more to it than that. Let me show you why this is the perfect video intro. We just hit 100 million subscribers and from the bottom of my heart, thank you everyone that subscribed. And to celebrate, I bought this ginormous private island and I'm giving it to one of you in this video. So I brought 100 of my subscribers to compete in four extreme challenges. Last one standing wins this island. The first challenge is simple. First 50 people to start a fire and light their torch, move on. Begin! Now sure, of course, it is relentlessly fast. In fact, in these opening 20 seconds, there was a visual change every 1.1 seconds. Mr. Beast knows that by front-loading the video with this much stimulus, it's very hard to feel bored and get distracted. But a very smart thing he does in his intros is establish scale. For example, in this shot he starts with the camera zoomed in on him, and then zooms back to reveal the entire island. A few seconds later, he shows the scale of all 100 contestants in a line. These are called establishing shots and Mr. Beast uses them for two purposes. To set the scene for the video, but also to wow the audience with the size of the production. He wants this to feel big, because it is. If you look at a typical retention curve, people usually start to hold attention when the first challenge or storyline begins. So Mr. Beast starts the first challenge after 17 seconds. He could have shown more of the island or given more explanation, but he always prioritizes retention. He actually puts a tour of the island after the first challenge has finished. Nearly every video Mr. Beast has uploaded has an intro formula like this. Open fast, establish scale and transition to first challenge. However, after the intro is where a lot of YouTubers encounter a problem. The rest of their video just can't match the energy. We can visualize a lot of YouTube videos with this energy graph. The video starts high with tension and energy but then drops off and only starts to peak again towards the end. If you go through the island video, it looks more like this. Every few minutes, Mr. Beast creates tension in the storyline with his challenges. This makes it hard to skip forward or leave the video. Constant tension is always built in. He also uses the contestants to help reinforce his storylines. Pay close attention to this scene, because it's really smart. I assume you saw the first Squid Game video. Yeah. Okay, well this one's a little different. Only the first 20 to step on the red line or cross it, move on, okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The red line, that's all we're thinking about, 20 people. This guy was used to emphasize the challenge. He basically repeated what Jimmy said to make sure you know what's happening. However, the magic of Mr. Beast is there is a clear strategy behind his videos, but they never feel too polished. Sometimes that's just about leaving in an organic moment like this. I need a snack. Wait, wait, you're definitely eliminated. You did say red light, green light at the end. Red light, red light. Let me review the footage and see if he's correct. When you were explaining the rules, you said- Red light, green light? Is there's no time limit. Yeah, we have our first finisher by technicality. He has even said he deliberately limits his videos to 1080p so they don't feel too high production. I don't like the way high quality footage look. I don't ever want things to feel too produced. Trust me, this guy could afford a few 4K cameras if he wanted them. It always has to feel like a YouTube video. When I showed this graph earlier, you might have noticed this green spike at the end. Well, I'm using that to represent another key to his retention. Every Mr. Beast video finishes with a high point, whether it's dramatic or just wholesome. This is integral to retention strategy on YouTube. It's what leaves the lasting impression in the viewer's mind. But we need to talk about the genius behind this thumbnail, which takes us on to part two of the equation, the clickbait master. I believe this is Mr. Beast's best ever thumbnail, and just like the video, it uses all the tactics Mr. Beast has learned over the years. 
there are five things that make it great. Starting with Jimmy himself, he takes up 33% of this thumbnail. Mr. Beast is arguably the most recognizable brand on YouTube, so it's really important to leverage that. Also, the facial expression of an excited, open mouth smile is by far the most commonly used expression on his channel. In fact, 76% of his videos in the last year utilize it. Why? It instantly gives emotion and hypes up what he is showing in the image. He's excited, the viewer's excited. If you focus closely on the editing on the face, you'll see Jimmy's eyes have been brightened. The eyes are the first thing we focus on when we see human faces, so from a psychology point of view it makes sense to pronounce them. Second of all, the entire thumbnail has a really good balance of colours. MrBeast and his team are masters of using good contrast. Even note the red headphones. They perfectly contrast against the light blue and green of the island. Also, this image is perfectly saturated without being over the top. A lot of YouTubers would edit this thumbnail like this. And while it may be even brighter and more vibrant, it suddenly makes the island feel less realistic. It's important for Mr. Beast to show something that doesn't look overly fake. The third point is using things in the image to show scale. This boat, for example, and the volcano. Just like in the actual content, Mr. Beast wants to show off how big this video is. The micro details are where things get really interesting. The roller coaster, the Beast Burger building, and the giant gold statue make the island feel even more luxurious. But they are also a subtle way of adding more brand. My favourite part of the thumbnail is the figure parachuting down to the island. It's very smart because it both reaffirms the scale, but also adds a bit of extra intrigue. You're left wondering, who is that and will he or she land? The fifth thing that makes all Mr. Beast thumbnails great is simplicity. If we zoom out on this image, it's still very easy to work out what's happening. Thumbnails should be instantly understandable at any size. So now we have part 1 and part 2 of the equation, but none of this would work if it wasn't for part 3, video financing. And this isn't as simple as you might think. You see, often Mr. Beast is portrayed as this crazy kid who's on the brink of going broke. But here's two things that make these expensive videos possible. Firstly, Mr. Beast is actually a very effective salesman. Watch his merch plug in this video. This is our first and maybe only merch drop of the entire year. We filmed a Mr. Beast video that will never be uploaded to the public. Just buy either item and we will email you a link to watch the video. You have seven days, let's go see who wins the app. He basically has a sales formula. He mentions the merch is exclusive, gives the free video as an additional incentive, and makes the drop time specific. This is textbook sales. Now, just before we mention the second and possibly most important factor behind his business model, there's something else we need to mention when it comes to financing. Creators like Mr. Beast have actually begun selling some of their older videos. This is often called back catalog licensing, and the company making this possible is today's sponsor Spotter. Here's how it works. Spotter gives you upfront cash now in exchange for future ad revenue on your back catalog of videos. You can use the money however you want, whether it's hiring an editor and growing your team, or even just saving it yourself for peace of mind. On their website, Mr. Beast said he used the money to help fund his Spanish channel. You maintain full ownership of your channel and all your future revenue. It's a simple trade for your old videos with nothing to pay back ever. Spotter have already deployed over $550 million to hundreds of creators, including the likes of Mr. Beast, Dude Perfect, and many more. So if you're a YouTuber who's interested in how much your old videos could be worth, visit spotter.com forward slash paddy, link down below. So what is the second thing that ties everything together? Mr. Beast's business is mission driven. In terms of content, Jimmy obsesses over making the perfect video. In terms of money, Jimmy has a deep-rooted desire to help those in need. These two missions make every video mean more than your average creator. And speaking of this, I'm going to donate 5 cents to Mr. Beast Philanthropy for every subscribe this video gets. So you can do your good deed for the day by scrolling down and hitting that red button. Thanks for watching and shout out to Mr. Beast for changing the YouTube game.